that uh, she was telling her about the spades and this is and she said this is all that singing yeah because I texted told her I am not directing for that day so that is her month well this is my month right here so she um that's for December what happened to December oh because she got December I got November and she got December so I didn't say who say who See what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. We can't sing that. That's probably gonna be um, Brother Taylor. some issues with that choir. I gotta let, stop letting the devil do it. I said I was gonna talk, call Bishop. I said I was going to call Bishop, and I was going to say to Bishop, Bishop, I just need to talk to you about the choir. So the next time you have a meeting, okay, you'll have a better understanding of what's really happening. When you see people up there doing solos, or you see me up there doing more than one solo, or, or you don't see the choir singing. I want you to understand. I want you to get a, a understanding of what's really happening here, okay? Now, um, I don't know what the situation is. And I am of age now, and maybe that's the issue. Maybe Cheryl feel like... Ain't no more, that's it. Maybe Cheryl feel like she wants to be over the choir. Maybe um, she feel like she should be the one because she said her ministry is music.
the Lord let her know her ministry is music. So maybe that's that's what the issue is about, right? I said because she's doing a lot of underhand things, right? To discourage me and to make me back out, right? She get up in the church and she all shouting here and she leading the service and she giving you and Pastor Glover the impression that she's a Holy Ghost filled saint. But I'm here to tell you that the devil is still in her, okay? Now, with that being said, I call rehearsal for Tuesday, for Wednesday, and first the rehearsal was supposed to be Friday, I think it was supposed to be Friday and a Sun and a Saturday. That was the first rehearsal. Okay, let me go to that message. Let me just bring up these texts. So I want to read them back to you just to give you a little thing of the part that I'm playing here and how I'm trying. But the devil is really kicking up in them choir members. And these saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled people and the unsaved people. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so. I wrote up, I say, everyone remember their Sundays on my months of directing, which is November, January, March, etc. Right? This was back in October. Okay? I told them that heads up to everyone. Rehearsal will start. Rehearsals will start Sunday, Saturdays at 2.30. That was October 4th. I let them know I was going to start rehearsals for the choir, right? Saturdays at 2.30. I gave them the song and told them to listen to it. Wait a minute, let me go, let me go. Okay, I gave them the song and told them to listen to it because... I was singing a song for Mother Anderson. I had the song ready for Mother Anderson. Right? Okay, now. Everybody, everybody, I sent it, a group text to everybody. The only person that didn't get the message was my daughter because she wasn't in the group. But everybody else got that message that is supposed to be a part of the House of Prayer Choir. I let them know when the rehearsal was going to be. I let them know rehearsals. I had took the rehearsals to start Saturday at 2.30. Let me give you the dates. November 2nd at 4 p.m. And November 7th at 2.30. Right? So now... And the last one will be November 14th because I was thinking that Mother Anderson's service was going to be either, if it wasn't the second Sunday, it'd be the third Sunday because I couldn't even, I couldn't remember when exactly it was going to be because Cheryl didn't let me know. Okay, so then I went back and I said November 9th at 4 o'clock. Now I'm, I'm letting them know when I'm starting my rehearsal. Now, mind you, Bishop, nobody did not respond, including your son, including Brother Taylor. Now, tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, next Sunday for your appreciation service and for your for your Mother Anderson appreciation service, he's going to be up there singing. But he didn't come to my rehearsal that was that, that Tuesday. 
but he came that's that's what was it saturday yeah we had a rehearsal saturday he didn't show up my mistake yes we had a rehearsal saturday he didn't show up that saturday right that sunday he was downstairs saturday he was downstairs i don't know whether he was there i think you had done left but I, i'm not even sure but he sh he was downstairs sunday after service he comes in for rehearsal now tell me if that's right bishop i just want to know if it's right or not if it's right you is a part of something right this was missionary stevens rehearsal not my rehearsal my rehearsal was following that um he downstairs the saturday he comes up to sunday he never said nothing to her and if he did she never said nothing to me so lack of communication on her part and that ain't nothing but the pewdie devil nothing but the pewdie devil i'm 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 i'm, I'm not gonna compromise i'm not gonna say oh well maybe she forgot maybe she wasn't thinking no cheryl know what she doing and see what i want you to understand is that cheryl mother was an interactor with my uncle as you know that during that time that he was i want i want to take this back some so you can understand what's happening here so you won't think oh evangelist jordan is just saying that no 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 i want i want you to see this big picture here okay so there was an interaction going on between her mother and my uncle during that interaction my grandmother was letting their both know that they was living in sin they had no business she did not allow that woman to come in her house. When the woman would come, she would walk in the door. My grandmother would either be in her, well, she wouldn't be in her bedroom because if you've been to her apartment at Stag Walk, you know, when she opened the door, you walk right in. You could see her bedroom. But, so she was in the living room. And if she heard Ella Robinson's voice, she would call my uncle, James Al. And he would say, yes, ma'am. I know you don't got the woman in my house. That woman do not supposed to be in my house. You got a wife. He, she's not supposed to be in the house. Now, from that time on and for the rest of Ella Robinson's life, she held that against my grandmother. Whatever was being said in reference to mother wilson transpired over to cheryl i'm not gonna say nothing about eve i ain't gonna say nothing about the rest of her children i can only talk about cheryl even though it transferred over to all the kids that was with her so now cheryl took on this spirit that was always uh 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 take over spirit a uh, fight in spirit she just didn't put up a dukes to me always had that evilness about her i guess that's what i, I i'm gonna call it she always had that evilness like i don't i don't want to i don't want to interact with you i don't want to talk with you i would try to talk with her i would go to their house i would try to enter interact my grandmother didn't too much want me to be in the house anyway because Elder Robinson raised her hands and hit me one time. And my grandmother wasn't too cool with that. Right? So now, she specifically said, all right, you're not going back there no more. So whatever Uncle James told her, it, it went down the line. So now, Cheryl, back to, to making a long story short, now coming into the church, there's always been some overpowering there that Cheryl always wanted to do to me and I'm not one to want to be fighting with you over things that's not mine you see what I'm saying a choir is not mine being a service leader does not belong to me uh um um you see what I'm saying playing an instrument in the church does not belong to me you see what I'm saying but these are the things that she always wanted to be control over 
You see what I'm saying? Singing a solo for a Pacific service does not belong to me unless I'm over the service and it still don't belong to me because I'm not the only one that could sing. But these things are the things that her and her mother always over empowered us. And I always felt and still feel that way. Ella Robinson felt like she had to go forth so that whatever place she went into or she figured that I was going to go into, she had to get there first. You see what I'm saying? And I always felt that y'all went right along with it. You know what I'm saying? She wanted to be an evangelist. Whatever she did, she followed you wherever you went. She, I guess if she could have followed you to your house in your bed, she would have been there too. But um, she followed you. She stayed behind you when you was pastor. She didn't have too much to say to Pastor Glover. Pastor Glover wasn't on the front line then. So I'm not going to say nothing to Pastor Glover. I don't have to be behind Pastor Glover. I don't have to be all up in Pastor Glover's face. I got to be in Bishop. I got to be in Pastor Anderson's face. So she was always running back telling you things. And that's when you would run, get me, and bring me in your office, if you remember that. Every time we would have choir rehearsal, there was always something that she would be transpiring in that, in that rehearsal that would discourage me. To the point one time. Michelle G. or Shelly Drayton woman with medium dark. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see Shelly text you back. Yeah, she texted me something stupid back. I said, did you read my text? Come on now. What's the matter with you? I ain't, I know who you are. Why you giving me, why you telling me your name? I ain't say nothing about nothing that it was in reference for her to give me no. So I text her back. Like, like, did you read what I wrote? Uh, I don't know. I saw, I saw her put her name in there, but I was like, why is she ever saying her name? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I was like, what is that about? But um, then she texted me back and told me what it was for. She says for the um for January. So that must be what's gonna. Let me text her back and ask her what Sunday it is again. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm either going to call Bishop today or after service. I'll see how it's running after the service. Probably so, because they probably going to be doing stuff downstairs or whatever. Either after the service and, um, have a talk with him. And, um, yeah, talk with him. Because I was thinking about um, calling him. I said, you know what? It came to me to, to call him. I need to um, talk with him about Cheryl and Ella Robinson. Because I think he really, he really, I think he got the picture because she kind of came out, she kind of came out crazy Wednesday. And he had to shut her up. He had to tell her. Who, who came out? Who came out first? Um, Elder Robinson, and she and he knew that she was coming at me, and he came. He came and stood up. He he said he said something about it, and you know, I could tell she probably didn't feel no kind of. I mean, I could tell she probably feel a little way about it because she thought that because of her title she'll be able to say it and it was gonna be all right. Everybody else was silent. But I was like, um, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because she said, oh. She was like, oh. Um, we, we was talking about 
we was having Bible study and now we talking about all of this, right? So I know Odom has said some things and that's when I was saying about people don't believe and that's why they not moving. And we was talking about, I was telling them that about some of the kids and how they feel about what's going on in the church and how one person, one young people in the church told me that they didn't want to get saved if that's how it is. They don't want to get saved. I didn't mention no name, but that was Desiree. I didn't mention no name, but that's what I said. And I was saying, we were, we were just talking about, Bishop was talking about things that's not happening in the church and how we should be doing it. And nobody should be feeling no kind of way. If you can do it, go ahead and do it. That's why I feel that somebody must have felt some kind of way for me preaching. He ain't text me yet. He ain't say nothing to me yet about me preaching. So I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to go tomorrow. I got my message just in case. He say to me, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Go ahead, you can preach. I have my, if not, it's no problem. I'll go up there, lead the service or whatever the case may be. Whoever they got to lead the service, no problem. But, um... She was like, yeah, but um, that's the, we, we, what, what, why are we talking about all of it? Then she want to say, because everybody's not here. Okay, this is what she said. She, she said that and she said, she started out by saying, oh, we was having Bible study. We was talking about Bible study and now we having a meeting. So everybody was like, what? Even Cheryl was like, mom, what? Said we having a meeting. This should have been said. It should have been said then, in the meeting. I said, well, ain't nothing was said in the meeting. Nothing was said. It wasn't even brought up in the meeting, what we was talking about. And some stuff was brought up, but nobody didn't want to say nothing once it was brought up. Just like with the choir. Cheryl said all she had to say, but the real fact of the matter was that she should have just said, if, if they start acting up again, we not doing no choir no more. See, I don't have the patience. I'm not messing with all that. But anyway. So now, uh, then she said, yeah, we, we, um, everybody is not here to defend themselves. And I'm like, who are we talking about that somebody got to be here to defend themselves? Who's saying this? This is Elder Robinson. Yeah, this is Elder Robinson talking. They not here to defend themselves. It should be said in front of them. So that, that who is you talking wait, about? Wait, um, okay, wait, this was Wednesday? This was Wednesday after you left. Uh, what they were talking about? We was talking, we, we yeah. was talking about the Bible study, and then Bishop started talking about why the saints don't move, why they not moving forward, why they not doing this, why they not doing that. With the this and that, he was emphasizing what it was. Uh -huh. And um, I don't understand why they not doing that. And why people feel this kind of way if somebody is doing it. Why don't they just go ahead and do it if they want to do it? The saints is not, is, is, is they, they come to church and they not enthused. That's what he's talking about. So okay. Odom, Odom said something on the, on the line of, oh, well, you know, they need to be revived. Bishop, they need to be revived. If they're not revived, then they're not going to do nothing. Then she started talking about the scripture, do your first work over, and blah, 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 blah. So then I came in and I said, well, Bishop, I think that this is the first time I'm talking because they done been talking from the time you was there to the time you left and until I said something then. So like about 20 minutes after you left, that's when I said something. So I said, well, Bishop, I think because the people is not moving as you have used the word before they stagnated they stagnated in christ they not moving and the reason why they not moving is because they don't believe uh -huh. they don't believe so since they don't believe how can they move because i'm thinking about what jesus said what jesus said i'm thinking about what the spirit said to me about they don't see me so if they don't see you if they don't see me they ain't gonna see you so if they don't see christ that means they not they not believing in christ so now if they're not believing in Christ and they're not believing what I'm saying about Christ, so that's why they want to knock me down and don't want me to preach, don't want me to have services, don't want me to do nothing because the belief that I have in Christ, they don't. So they're going to knock me down because it's showing them up. So now I'm telling Bishop that um, they, they don't believe, so they can't move. How you going to move if you don't believe in people? 
How you? How somebody gonna move up if you don't believe? And then Odom came in and she said, yes, because the leaders, the leaders have to be living right. The leaders have to be um, 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 believing. The leaders have to have an anointing. That's what she was saying. And if they don't have all of that, then the church can't move nowhere. And if they don't believe that all of that, whatever else she said, then the church can't move. So then I said, I came and then he came with the kid. He said, yeah, because the kid, look at the kids. The kids are dying out. Nobody ain't want to do nothing. We come in the church. We just come in the church. You ain't doing nothing. No enthused. I know what he's saying. You go in the church every Sunday. You're not feeling the power of God. Even if you, if even if he, as the bishop, is feeling the power of God, and me and you is feeling it, Odom feeling the power of God. Everybody else ain't feeling it. So we'll get up and we'll give God praise and we'll thank God or whatever. But everybody else is looking at us. Why? Because they're not believing. So they can't move with us. They can't thank God. They can't praise God with us. So now, he, I'm, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, yes, people is not believing, so we're not moving. I said, and then, and then when you go to do something and God, just like I said before, this is me still talking to them. It's like I said before, God is not a box God. They got God box. And because they have never seen God do such a thing, they believe it's not God, so they don't move. They don't, they don't, they don't agree with you. They don't want to work with you because they don't believe that that's God moving in you. So they become stagnated and they don't move. So the church ain't going nowhere. So now that's why people become jealous when God start working with them. Now I ain't even talking about myself. I'm just speaking. Now that I'm repeating it, now I'm, I'm seeing why she said what she said. Uh, people become jealous because when God start working with you and, it, and, and he's not really working with them and God don't have, now mind you, God don't have no respect of persons. These people are still saved, but because this person over here is moving, they don't want this person to move. I said, we don't, and then we started talking about going out. Say, nobody don't want to go out. I say, yeah, because people, we used to fellowship when I was growing up. I say, and people always talking about fellowshipping. I say, and it's, and, and, and it's sad because, like, and I named the churches. I said, like, Trinity Church wasn't open. I say, it's bad that they couldn't even come over here and fellowship with us. Because somebody going to feel some kind of way that we trying to take their member. Or if you get up and go over to them. They feel like, oh my goodness, you coming over here? Oh, did you go talk to your pastor? Did you go talk to your bishop? And it ain't even all like that. We coming to fellowship. I said, we don't go nowhere. Here go Ella Robinson. We go out. I said, where we go? Yeah, we go out. We fellowship with other church because I was talking about Bishop White Church and how they fellowship. They went to Jersey and I had went one time with with Evangelist Hardy to Jersey with her to fellowship. I said, they go all the way to Jersey. I said, we ain't even fellowshipping with no, we fellowship with the same people that ain't even fellowship with us. And Ella Rob said, we go play. I said, where we go? Well, nobody, nobody ain't got no, nobody ain't come talking about there was other churches to go to. I said, what I did, she turned around and looked at me. I said, well, you probably don't know about it because it wasn't presented to you. I said, nobody didn't tell you nothing about it. I said, but I went to who I was supposed to go to, and I told them about Maryland. Go out to Maryland, because I went out to Maryland, and that person wanted to affiliate with the women's department. I said, and I, I said, I didn't go to Sister Cheryl. I said, but I went to the person. Everybody knew what person I was talking about. I went to the person. I told the person about it. I said, look. See, y'all didn't even know nothing about it. So now everybody's sitting there. Ella Robinson's like, oh, okay, oh, uh-huh. And Cheryl's sitting over there with silence of the lambs. Nobody got nothing to say now. So now, now Ella Robinson is talking about, she said something else that was hitting me, like come back, like fighting against me. And I'll come back to her. And I'll, I'll say what it is. 
And then she'll stop. And then she said, well, wait a minute now. So everybody stopped. I said, okay. Because she, she was cutting me off. And then she said, all right, go ahead, finish. So I said what I said. Then I said, all right, Elder Robinson, go ahead. You can. I said, all right, Elder, you can go ahead. I'm finished. She said, now, we were going to have, we started out with Bible study. This is Bible study. We have Bible study. I said, Lord, Jesus. I'm thinking the lady going to say something. She said, now we having a meeting. Everybody looking at him. Um, Odin was like laughing. Uh huh, uh huh. I was like, I, I don't care what y'all say, what y'all think. You ain't gonna throw this out here again to me. I'm not swallowing it. What? What? What are you talking about? Well, um, what, what? What? I'm she said went from Bible study to meeting because now we talking about different things of things to be done and what not being done. She said this should have been brought up in the meeting. This should have been talked about in the meeting so that people could defend themselves. But the people ain't here. I'm like, who? Who ain't here? So she, she got quiet. Who ain't here? So Bishop came and said, no, no. He got like kind of irritable. Irritated rather. No, irritable is good, is the word. He got irritable because he was like, no, no. This, we still have a Bible study. And all of this is geared to the Bible study. All of this is geared to this paper right here, to this lesson that we talking about. I can remember what the, I can't remember right now what the lesson was saying. But it kind of like flowed into that. It wasn't like somebody just thought about, you know what? This and that. No, it flowed into it. And I always, when I'm saying something, I did went to the lesson. I said, just like the lesson say here. And I brought in what I was saying to bring out that part. And Bishop was like, no, no, we ain't going to be sitting here always talking about what's on this paper. There's a lot of times you talk about one thing and it winds up going over to something else. So no, that, that, that. That it don't have to be like that. We still having Bible study. He knew what he was, what she was getting at. And I get, I don't know who she was talking about, but I'm thinking maybe she was talking about Pastor Glover not being there because that's the only person that was there. And because Odin was talking about the leaders, she felt some kind of way, number one, because she was a leader. Number two, Pastor Glover wasn't there. Number three, Bishop wasn't defending. She felt like Bishop probably should have said something being that he was a leader. But him not saying nothing let you know that he agreed with what was being said because apparently he feel like he wasn't doing it. So now she come in with all of that, talking all that foolishness. And see, and that's why I say I, I think that I should call him. I should either call him and talk to him or, or um, talk to him tomorrow because he need to understand what going on with elder robinson because see i think a lot of stuff way back that he will begin to remember when i start talking to him and he will be he would see oh yeah she did do that but i never knew why she do that yeah she did it because she went out with my uncle and this happened and that happened and my grandmother said this and my grandmother did that and these are the things that she's still holding on to and that's why she could get into the bible study and start talking foolishness that's why she could get up in the pulpit and start talking about you got something to say come to me that this woman didn't like me this woman did they 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 didn't care nothing about me. that's why she could get up there and say all that because all of this is getting back way back Back when because of a relationship that she had with a married man and it made her look bad as well as him but she was the one that was messing around with the man but the good thing about it the man brought her to church got her saved he going on about his business he dead and buried now but at least she in the church and she feel like I ain't got to bring no props to him because she's so stuck on herself that she don't want to give praise to God for the person that brought her there if it wasn't for God connecting her with that man, my uncle, she probably would have still been running the street with a head, chicken with a head cut off. But she want to get up in the church and she want to start downing people that helped her get to where she going. So now even though they maybe had did this to her, talked about her, said this and say that, the fact of the matter is she's an elder and I'm not. 
So why are you still holding on to that foolishness? The fact is Cheryl got more pull in that church than me. Why is she still acting a fool? Why is she still doing underhand things? So these are the things that I feel that bishops should know about. See, because Pastor Glover know it already. Because Pastor Glover know what she doing. Because she right hand in hand with Pastor Glover. But Bishop don't know. Whatever's introduced to Bishop, Bishop just know what it is that they tell her. I mean, tell him. He don't know what's really going on in that choir. He just gets there and he may see Michelle not singing. Or he may see... Or he may see Evangelist Jordan not singing. But he 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 don't know what's going on. So he gonna come to his own conclusion. Well, what's going on? Why do say folks ain't why do say folks ain't singing? Well, why the choir ain't singing? Why this and that ain't why this and that happening? And he don't even know what's going on. But people tell him what, what they want him to hear, but not telling him the real truth. Just like when I was in the office and I was telling him stuff. I say, I see now you see. Everybody backed out from giving out those envelopes, but now they want to turn around and want to give out tracks. And then they want to not involve me, but they want to say something to you. So now you want to tell me that I should do so-and-so, but what about them? No, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not giving out no track because I got tracks in my envelopes that I'm giving out. They going out every Wednesday, every Thursday, every whatever day they giving out. I gives out, I done gave out 500, two, no, not 500. I gave out 250 tracks. I wonder if they did. And I did that over a period of three months. How many they gave out in a period of one day? In a period of two days, a week. So now just like I'm giving out these tracks, whether it's in the envelope or outside the envelope, why they couldn't come apart and be apart with, and we all go out together, on whatever day that Ella Robinson want to decide to do it on. No, everybody want to come along and shut down things. Pastor Gover want to shut down this on a Sunday. They want to shut down this on a Monday. They want to shut this down on a Tuesday. Want to shut it down on a win, on a, on a, um, on a Saturday. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. So now they, they sanitize, as you said today, they sanitize today. Which they could have, that could have been done when we was having the Zoom chat. Why you, what, what, what? No, we don't have rehearsal because we got to do sanitizing and they don't want nobody in there. You could have still sanitized after the rehearsal. But that's what they're doing now. Exactly. My point exactly. They doing just what I said. Just what I said. And I know Cheryl went back and told them. She probably the one that came up with it. Well, um, why don't we just do it on a Saturday after the rehearsal? Because we got rehearsal past up. Oh, yeah, that's all right. But she ain't want to say it from the beginning. Because she wanted to fight against me. That's why I said I want to talk to Pat. I want to talk to um Bishop Anderson. You, She wanted to fight against me about rehearsal. So now it want to look. It's Now she want to try to make me look bad because I'm not coming to rehearsal. Because I'm not there. Want to try to make it look bad. Because I know she's going to run her mouth. Just like you said. We might hear something about it Sunday. I don't care. Tomorrow. Because she's going to run back. So now she want to try to make me look bad. When she knew that Minister Anderson, Taylor, Julian was coming at that time. And she ain't say nothing. She in the office chilling out. She knew Taylor wasn't coming. New Taylor forgotten wasn't coming, and she ain't say nothing. Even though Evangelist Anderson is not Evangelist Anderson's responsibility, but since she want to take on the responsibility of her children, she didn't even say nothing. Minister Anderson right there in the house with her children, he didn't even say nothing, and he didn't even show up. So now I'm supposed to sit around waiting for two and three hours. Well, I'm going to say two. Because it was supposed to start at 4. And nobody ain't showed up. So that's an hour. Nobody ain't come. The last rehearsal, ain't nobody showed up. 4 o'clock. Ain't nobody get 4 o'clock. 4.30. 5 o'clock. 5.30. I think we got out of there maybe about 6 o'clock or something like that. Maybe later at that rehearsal. Because we went over my song and we went over Cheryl's song. 
And then Brother Taylor is there. But that, that's why I want to bring out to him. Yeah, I already brought it out to him about, about how he backed out from going out with me. Now, let's go to the rehearsal, Bishop. You made him a deacon. So now, it, either he going to be a part of the choir or he just going to be a full-blown deacon. Which one? Or he going to work together. So now, he don't want to, and, and, and you see, he ain't come to my rehearsal. That was Cheryl rehearsal he came to on Saturday. Not mine. He didn't come to my Tuesday rehearsal. If I had a dig, and you see he popped up today because I pushed in there, I wasn't coming. So he got the text, I'm, oh, Evangelist Jordan not coming, so I'm going to show up. Because I didn't tell nobody I wasn't coming. So now he's going to show up. That's why I was like, who was there? You naming all the people that was there. And when you named Brother Ty, I said, mm-hmm. I ain't no fool. I know he was going to show up. And see, the thing is, this is why I want to talk to Bishop as well. I said, I want you to see all of this. I want you to see this. So I want to take it piece by piece. So I'm not going to go back in your memory because you probably won't remember how he was doing before. But I want you to see it now. I had a rehearsal uh, we had a rehearsal Saturday, and he did not show up, but he came to Sunday. But that was Cheryl. That was Missionary Stevens' rehearsal. I had a rehearsal Tuesday. Text everybody about it. Nobody said nothing. So the only people that was in the rehearsal, because I know Bishop going to ask him, well, who came to the rehearsal on Tuesday? Oh, who came? You really want to know? It was. Um, um, Cheryl, it was, um, Danielle, and it was, um, Sister Drake. I said that, that, that's who came Tuesday. I mean Wednesday, I keep saying Tuesday. That's who came Wednesday. I said, we supposed to have a, a rehearsal Thursday. I said, everybody comes out of it. The only person that showed up at the time that it was supposed to be was Missionary Stevens. I said, your son didn't come, your, your daughter-in-law didn't come, and I can hear Bishop Anderson saying, now, well, she ain't got no bit. My point exactly. I said, but why she show up Wednesday, Bishop? And then I'm finding out that she showed up Saturday. I wasn't there Saturday. Everybody was there Saturday, Bishop. Your grandchildren didn't show up to none of my rehearsals, but everybody was there Saturday. They came in, rehearsal was supposed to be at 4, I pushed it to 4.30, and they got there 5 o'clock. Now, I know I'll be late doing Sunday school or whatever, but I don't, I don't, mm, to be honest, I don't have an obligation to be there because I'm not teaching nothing. If I was a teacher, that's a different story. Yes, you're supposed to be there for Bible study. No, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But the fact that I'm talking about is what you're over, you're supposed to be there. So I was there for my rehearsal. I put it 4.30, I was there for 4.30. Took it away from 4 o'clock so I would not be looking like I'm late. And anybody else that needed some grace spirit, they had 30 minutes grace spirit to be there. 4 to 4.30, not 5 o'clock. Not 5.15. So now when 5 o'clock come around, I'm leaving. Everybody want to get mad and look all stupid. Now Cheryl knew that, well, I, I'm not going to say she knew. I'm going by what I feel and what I think, that she knew that these people was coming late. She knew that Brother Taylor wasn't coming. I asked her about Brother Taylor. I don't know. No, you telling a lie. You know you know that man ain't coming to rehearsal. The way you and Brother Taylor chat and rat and pat about. Now he pops up for your rehearsal. I'm, I'm, mm, see, God don't like ugly. That's why they, 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 I don't know whether they're going to still play for the service or not. I don't know. But that's why it came out the way it did with them. Oh, you trying to be slick? They caught, the, they caught Cheryl's spirit from what you said. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Oh, y'all not having afternoon service? Well, you didn't say me nothing to me about we wasn't having after y'all wasn't having afternoon service. 
Now you want to get here in front of everybody and try to make me look stupid? No, well, whatever, whatever he said, no. Nah. I'm not coming. I won't be here, whatever the case may be. Because you can't be treating people like that. Oh, so she said y'all singing that on the first Sunday in January. Oh, that's right. The choir sings on the first Sunday, right? The second Sunday will be the solo. And I don't know when the next... Let me see when is the next Sunday. The next choir. So, choir singing. Let me see what she's going to say. When is the next choir singing? So I, I really think that um that I should um speak with him about that. I'll I'll wait. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not gonna move too fast. I'm gonna see what the Lord say twixt the time I get off the phone with you until the time I go to bed. See what he say. If he say call him, I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna have to chat with him. Let him know. I just want you to know what's going on with the choir. I want you to know. So when you don't see me singing, I want you to understand it's because I ain't got no time for the devil foolishness. I'm not going to sit back and condone with the devil and let the devil feel like that's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. Because I really think Cheryl is trying to take over the choir. She's trying to Cheryl be... Cheryl want to do everything. I just feel she want to do everything. She, want, she don't want to give nothing that nobody else do but that what their calling is what they are called to do. Like, if she could take over being a preacher, she would. You know what I'm saying? It's like, she don't want to let nobody do nothing without her presence, without having something in it. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. You get what I'm saying? You know, she knows certain things is not for her. That's not in your, that's not in your category. Why are you trying to be in? Well, see, that's the thing. I don't think she knows that. Whatever. Oh, sorry. It's yeah, yeah, outside. I know. I know. I hear I hear it. I hear it. I don't think she knows that. I think the things that Cheryl is not involved in is the things that she don't want to be involved in. Whatever it is that she want to be involved in, whether it got something to do with you, me, the cat, the dog, that's what she going to try to control. But if she don't want to be involved in something, see, she don't, she don't control the preaching of me because she don't want to be involved in it. She knows she's not a preacher. So she, she can't fight that. She don't have control over it, and I don't have control over it. So now, since I don't got control over it, it doesn't bother her. About the preaching. But whatever it is that I'm over. Anything that I can do. That gives an opportunity for me to do it. That's when she comes in. And try to be over it. Like like with the program. You see she take the program. She do the program. Now when it started out. It was just me doing program. Then Pastor Glover went and joined her into it. Oh we gonna have Cheryl. Is you gonna do you gonna do these Sundays and she gonna do these Sunday. I was doing all the Sunday. We didn't first of all we didn't have that many programs to do because we didn't have that many services. So only when it was appreciation service, because remember Pastor Glover wasn't getting no appreciation service at the time. So when it started out with internet and started out with computers, it started out with me. I was doing the program. I was on the computer. I was I was on the printer. I was the one that was doing everything. Once Cheryl, we went to, we, when we went to the um, convention one time, she got with Johnny. And they started talking and all of that. And Johnny was close with Pastor Glover. And that's when Cheryl stepped in. She started making the CDs. But when she realized that my CDs was better than hers, then she don't want, everybody was paying attention to my CD. Everybody wanted to buy my CD. Then she backed out of it because she knew I needed help. I, may, I needed to, to do some CDs and she needed to do, but she left me flat. I had to be the one to do all them CDs, just like my Back to Church Sunday. 
when she saw the attention was coming in to my service, she backed out from it. Because now the attention, just like you have said, is not on her. So I'm not going to help her. Instead of working with me in the background, she's still a part of it. She's still being seen because her fly is being seen. But no, no, it's even... Now see that the kids are doing something. Now she wanna be in there. But I know. Ooh, oh my God, sorry, I wanna. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's just funny. Um. What's the name of your house, dears? Yeah. Ooh, child. Huh? Mm hmm. I'm telling you, it's all about control. When she see that she can't control it no more, she back out. Well, she gonna, well, I guess she she gonna back out. out. That's why when she was saying, oh, that's a little bit too much for me, I know that's a lie. I know it's a lie. It's the because fact. What you said, what you said when well, you trying to be over here, the time you got over here trying to be over here, you should be helping Sister Jordan. Mm -hmm. You should be over here doing that. Why are you substituting the space for something new? For something else? You just told the lady this is too much for you. So why are you trying to yep. add something to yeah. it? Like these kids. Why are you adding them in it? You just said you want to add they in it, them in it. But then again, she never going to do rehearsals like that. So she probably ain't going to be going over her. She probably going to be going over something during Sunday school and try to present it in front of everybody. And then when you're doing something like a rehearsal, she's going to try to put her rehearsal in it. No, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. You should have said something. You're not going to come over and try to, no, I'm going to have what I do. And like I said, I'm only telling the parents. So I'll go, I'll tell Danielle. If I can get in touch with Danielle, I'll tell you to join. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell Taisha. Um, Taisha and Desiree, it's four and then I'll um, and then I'll t and then basically tell myself because <laughs> it's only them. And that's it. I'm not I'm not telling her anything because that's just the fact. I'm having my rehearsal for my for my day for when it's time for me to present. I don't got nothing to do with you. 